Welcome to Instant Replay Live. Nick, how's your day been today? <laughs> it's been fun. It's been a complete cluster of us trying to get videos sort of organized and ready. You're hearing this now a week after I've been gone for Gen Con, but we're recording everything beforehand, and it is pretty exhausting <laughs> to try to get everything in line before I take a trip and then before Joe takes a trip. Um, so we're just we're just battling reality right now. I've also got some other news. Oh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a replay live. We're playing They Bleed Pixels. We should probably say the name of the game at some point. Vaguely Pixels. You said Vaguely Pixels. I did not. I said They Bleed Pixels. They Bleed Pixels. That's what it's called. Joe is sometimes difficult, and on today, he's been especially <laughs> difficult to deal with. <laughs> um... But yeah, Joe is jumping around. Uh, one of the weird things about this game is they make you go through a tutorial and then immediately make you go through a tutorial again. So he's he's learning how to play, but you're like a little girl who <sighs> reads like a evil book from some kind of Lovecraftian horror and then gets crab hands. And uh, in your dreams, you have to face monstrosities. But the pixel art is beautiful and the blood and gore is is just it's fun like it's violent but really all the violence is just little red blocks so mm. is that you know it, I, I don't know it's just neat it kind of works for the game Eldritch and then yeah you get <laughs> yeah, uh, declared bonuses on on your attacks based on how Eldritch you are I, I love that um, so there's big news big news to share with Joe that I have literally held on to and kept secret for over a week now. The only evidence Joe has been given is that my car is slightly damaged. Yeah, I've just assumed you murdered somebody. Well, <laughs> you're not far off. Um, I honestly, like, this story, uh, laughter aside, it's a little bit nervous laughter actually. This story is not something I, I am proud of, and it's not something that I was like, oh man, it'll be so funny to tell on the channel. It's actually not funny at all. And there was a part of me at first that I was like, maybe I don't want to tell it on there. Um, and then another part that said, well, I kind of want to because I want to get people's opinions on this. Um, so I've been I've been saving it up. I've been and waiting because I wanted to get Joe's genuine reaction as well and, and hear what other people think. But... Um, to put it in, in the most blunt and direct way, the other day I was headed into work and I stopped at a stop sign and I looked right and didn't see any traffic coming. Um, and then I looked left and there were a couple cars coming and I let them pass. And then I did a quick look to the right and started to pull out at the same time, which I fully admit is a problem. Like I shouldn't have pulled out as I was looking mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there was a man in a wheelchair in front of me oh my god and I hit him wow and uh how I mean was it like a how intense was it well I knocked him over okay <laughs> not funny again nervous laughter right I feel actually like I felt in the moment Worse than I think I've ever felt in my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in a motorized wheelchair. As soon as I saw him, I hit the brakes. And the car, you know, kind of rolled to a stop. It hit his chair. He uh, teetered for a moment and then went over. And I got out. I rushed over to see if he was okay. Um, I called the, the emergency number immediately. And um, got an ambulance and police to, to come to the scene. Um, I explained to everyone who came to the scene that I was not going to try to, you know, weasel my way out of this. I explained exactly what happened. I looked left, well, I looked right, looked left, started to go as I went right, and uh, and then hit him. And um, I, I was like, you know, I, I understand, like, what has happened here is me at fault. And then the police officer did a weird thing, and he said, well, that may not be the case. Okay. And that was like okay what why 
And uh, it turns out, so, I mean, not turns out, of course I know this to be true, but the, these major things that went in my favor, I guess? Well, first of all, the guy was perfectly okay. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he didn't sustain any injury. Um, his wheelchair only had a, a small plastic piece break off. Nothing functionally broke or, or even really aesthetically. It was a very small piece. Um, but he was fine. And I was telling the truth. He told the exact same, you know, tale of events that I told. So there was no disparity there, no dispute. Um, what he was doing was driving his wheelchair down the road in the wrong direction. Oh, jeez. So it's illegal to have a wheelchair in the road. And he was not coming with the flow of traffic. He was going against the flow of traffic down the road. So, easy enough for the cars that were passing us to just avoid him, Mm -hmm. but when I went to turn, he had veered sort of to avoid the cars as well, and he was just right in front of my car, and he didn't stop at all. Like, he just came straight through, and he fully admitted that. So, (sighs) while I hit a person who is bound to a wheelchair with my car... I was also not cited for any crimes, and he was not completely at fault either. So basically, the officer said, "There's, there's no claim here. Just, mm-hmm. you know, kind of go your separate ways." Now he did want compensation for his chair, and I felt awful. So I actually, um, basically, the officer um, said, "Well, we have to give you each other's information if it's asked for in a case like this. Like legally, we have to do that." So, you know, you can pursue with insurance. Um, But then he suggested that we can make this go away right now, is how he worded it. Um, And uh, and not have to do that. And and I said, well, are we talking a dollar amount? (laughs) Like, is there an amount of money that would make you comfortable? Um, And he said, just whatever you think is right. Which gets really sticky, right? Yeah. Like that could be Whoa. like, do I think two hundred dollars? Five dollars, or yeah, or five dollars, right? Like that, that's a really weird thing. Um, so ultimately, this guy, he was really nice. He didn't try to like play up any of his injuries. Like the paramedics checked him out. He said he was fine. They said he was fine. He didn't try to like say, oh my neck or anything like that. He said the compensation he wanted was strictly for the damages to the chair. Mm -hmm. So I offered him... I'm not even going to say how much I offered him. I'm just going to say I offered him a a small but reasonable amount. He accepted. He didn't take any of my information, and we parted ways. So I don't have to worry about, like, him coming after me, you know, after the fact. Or I asked the officer, I was like, is this an admission of guilt? The officer said no, and I actually suggest you do it, which was weird. Um, <laughs> that is it really was, weird. It was weird advice, yeah, to get. Um, and uh, and God, it was one of like the scariest moments in my life. Turned into a kind of okay event, like okay event. Yeah, the guy like so I had already gotten his information from the officer, and he was like, "Well, you've got my number. If you want to call me, we'll get together. We'll we'll drink beer and watch football." Which are two things I never do. <laughs> so I was like, uh, all right, you know, and just kind of like pass that off so I wouldn't have to worry about it. The other thing that's super cool is actually I didn't have any cash on me. And I told him, if we're going to agree to that, I have to go to the bank. <laughs> and he totally trusted me. He was like, okay, well, here's where I'm going to be. Can you bring me money? Which was a little scary, like carrying money to go meet someone. But the last thing the officer said as a parting advice was like, bring only the amount of money you are agreeing to bring. Don't bring anything extra, you know, like in case it is sketchy uh, or if he tries to milk more at the scene with the officer not there or whatever. But he didn't. The guy didn't seem to be trying to scam <laughs> me. He seemed genuinely to just want repairs for his chair. Um, so, Nick, I, I really got to ask, why do you hate the crippled? Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> it... In the moment, it felt like the worst thing that I could have possibly done. And, like, I was going to be, like, vilified by everyone who came on scene. Like, the paramedics and the firemen who showed up and the officer were just going to all be glaring at me. And I was going to be clearly the worst person in existence. And and life was going to be over for me. But it turned out to not be that bad, actually. Okay. (laughs) That's, uh, I mean... 
I, I had once hit a car that had a which had a woman and her uh, like baby in it, and I felt pretty bad about that. But yeah. man, that's intense to actually striking a homeless man in his wheelchair. Uh, I, hold on, not homeless. Oh no, I'm sorry, not homeless. I don't yeah, know, crippled is what I meant to say. Yeah, 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 not homeless, but um, a a crippled man in a wheelchair. A, a cripple is also a weird thing. Like, I guess he he has some kind of you know something impairs him, but he. Um, when he was helped up, a couple passersby helped him up, actually. Which was really weird, like, for all of the, like... I was trying to be as, like, humble and, and accepting of my guilt as possible. I'm the one who called the police, and I said some passersby are picking him up off the street because he had been knocked over, and you know you don't want to, like, pick someone up until the paramedics are there. The 911 operator was the worst person in this entire arrangement. Like, the officer was super calm and nice. He he found a resolution that worked for everybody. But the 911 operator was like, Sir, sir, you cannot move him. And I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not. It's other people, and it's already happening. And like, Sir, do you hear me? You cannot move him. The paramedics will not like that. And I was like, No, no, don't you understand? I, I'm telling you, it's already happening, and it's not me. Um, and she continued to yell at me. Like, it was weird. Like, to add to my already fragile emotional state, having someone just yell at you like that when you're clearly... Like, I was being very clear mm -hmm. and telling her I had nothing to do with it. Well, that is an intense story. I mean, I... I, I feel like I feel a little bad because we didn't talk about this game at all. <laughs> I got, I, well, we can get on in the next episode. But I will say, I mean, it, not being a 911 operator is also, like, crazy stressful. So, oh, sure. I yeah. Mean, uh, but we'll... <laughs> Uh, I mean, is there anything else you need to add to that? That's insane. Uh, I, I basically, don't... I'm just curious, like, has anyone ever been in such a situation? Am I the worst person in the world for just paying this guy a paltry, but apparently fair to him? I mean, he was super happy with it. Mm. Some. He didn't sustain any injuries. I didn't see him, but I definitely did go a little bit faster than I should have coming out of a stop and... without clearing my right path. Yeah. But then he was in the road and also coming the wrong way down track. Like, I, I want to know what people think about this, because... Well, what I want to know is, should Nick have finished the job? What do you guys think? Jesus. Next time on Instant Replay Live, I'm in jail. <laughs> <laughs>